pawpaw, Asimina triloba. It's a native small tree that is very tolerant of shade, moisture, even black walnut. And the juglone root exudate of the black walnut makes a tropical tasting fruit, an unbelievable tasting fruit for our colder climates. Hardy to zone 5b, perhaps even colder. I'd like to spend a little time highlighting this fantastic tree and talk about what context in our landscape it seems to have been doing the best in. So stick with us. It's a complex little glade, but right in front of me there are a few pawpaws. We've got four little trees here. A smaller one, I'm looking from the south here, so they actually get taller as they go a little deeper into the shade. And 10 years in, so they're not exactly the fastest growing trees. It takes quite a while for them to really establish. Uh, last year they made some fruit. Two years ago they made their first crop. Last year they made a decent amount, and now you can see coming into their 10th or 11th year of life, they're starting to really become productive. And here they are directly under black walnut. This is a really nice representation. So they're just starting to ripen up now. We're going to look at, for our central New York scenario, it'll be the first week of October that these will come into their peak ripeness. I like to look for the drops. Once they're on the ground, they tend to be at their peak beautiful ripeness. And they're just coming into their bearing age in a real way. So one key thing with pawpaw is you need to be patient. They take quite a while to establish. These are the tallest trees, the healthiest trees that we have in our landscape. And you can see that we're distinctly in the shade in this scenario. In fact, let me go to the north of these and look um, in the direction where sun comes in. Here I am to the north of this little stand of pawpaws. So the sun comes up and through. In this arc, you can see there's a giant walnut to the south of all this. I cast a very significant amount of shade, which they're very content with. In fact, there's a walnut within a few feet of one of the more productive ones here. It's about two feet to the south and east. So near complete canopy cover in the summer months. And they're doing just fine with that. I would argue they're even happier for being in the shade. I think if you were to take young seedling pawpaws and put them right smack dab in the middle of a uh, completely open field, they may actually suffer and pass away instead of establish. It's down by your creek bottoms where water flows periodically, where you've got rich bottomland soils. That seems to be where they really want to thrive. We found definitively they want to be in a group. You put one or two in and you'll get almost no fruit. A nice little thicket of four or five and they start to do much better for themselves. Let's look at some other areas. As I head north, deeper into the woods here, we're coming into a very significant white ash canopy. Some pretty older, mature trees. Very little direct sunlight comes down through this area. And you can see where we've dotted some random pawpaws on the edges of these pathways. They're completely content. This tree uh, got rubbed by a buck a few years ago, which broke it, and it just simply sent up a bunch more suckers. I threw a cage around it, and it seems fine. By and large, we do not see deer browsing on the leaves or hurting the buds or the bark of these trees, but they do go after the fruit once they drop. So you see here you can see Amorpha fruticosa, the blue false indigo bush providing some nitrogen in the shade to a nice little pawpaw. So this deep in the shade, they're not going to grow with explosive vigor. This is holding them back. But part of this design is they're shade tolerant enough that they can live under this canopy of ash while we wait and see if emerald ash borer will be part of our reality. If the emerald ash borer comes, which it seems is inevitable, the likelihood is this canopy will disappear over time, and so we're planting in trees that can occupy the space now, including these pawpaws, persimmons and hazelnuts, Coosa dogwood, and other plants. And if and when that canopy releases, these pawpaws will be at an age where they'll really appreciate that additional light and be able to fruit heavily. Here I'm looking at the northeast corner of our property line. It's one of the lower points in the property, and quite dominated by 
black walnut again, just on the property line between us and our neighbors to the north. So a whole lot of juglone going on in here, a whole lot of shade. And again, here are these pawpaws thriving in this shady context, exposed to a whole lot of deer browse. In fact, I put a bunch of elderberry plants in this spring and they've been hammered so steadily, reliably back in here. So the deer are definitely moving through here consistently and they completely leave these pawpaws alone. Here we've got a little pond that captures water after really heavy rain events. So there is a lot of water to go around in this particular area. It's moist, it's cool, and it's shady. And there are the pawpaws growing nicely and tucked in as a northern boundary element underneath the walnut and catalpa is one, two, three pawpaws all doing just fine. Growing a little slower than if they were out in a, a little more sun, but this is their context. They're very content to be in the rich, moist, cool, shaded bottomlands, get themselves established, get up into adolescence or young adulthood, and then look for that canopy release, which you can either facilitate by doing some tree harvesting, or just to see if these other trees pass away, or perhaps even girdling one or two of these walnuts in another five, 10 years to really pump up the production of these pawpaws. For now though, we'll just keep planting them all around the property, knowing that they love the shady, moist conditions that we've got here, and especially with this huge black walnut influence. It's a fantastic understory tree. So that is the pawpaw, a Simina triloba. We look forward in a, about two months to be eating this tropical tasting fruit that happens to be native and hardy to our zone 5B. Thanks for watching.